a population of over 176 million people. 64% of the adult population in Nigeria is said to be on the bank. Nigeria is a country where the financial sector boasts of 22 commercial banks, over 400 microfinance banks, and over 23 mobile money operators who are trying to tap into the market potential of the large underbanked population in the economy. My definition of financial inclusion is the access to financial services that is available to the adult population in any given economy. Uh, the more or the higher the number of the adults that have access to various financial services, the higher the financial inclusion and conversely. And you know such financial services includes payments, it includes insurance, it includes pension and credit. So when people, adult population have access to these services, then they are said to be financially included. We are aware that the rural areas are a bit lacking when it comes to uh, inclusions of insurance. Why? Because the, we don't have enough food soldiers that need to spread the, the message. Now much of what we are doing, we are doing much of the globalization, the internet is taking over, but they are still lacking, it doesn't get there. That is why we need food soldiers who will go there and preach the message to them. By any indication around the world is really reaching out to the bottom of the pyramid. The bottom of the pyramid is, is defined by those that have not had access to any banking product or services or facilities over the past 10 years. Why do I say 10 years? Because that was the advent when bricks and mortars of banks in the most advanced world were being replaced with the digital technology, which is predominantly being accessed via the internet. Experts say that the current underbanked population control over 75% of daily retail transactions as the country is yet to fully transit from her traditional cash-based economy. The result is the increasing number of informal financial operators whose activities is not regulated but control high volume of liquidity which can transform into economic opportunities. If you are not aware of the existence of a service, uh, it is not likely that you avail yourself the use of such services. We no get business with all those banks here. Yeah. My great grandpapa, you know no banking, you don't know any bank. My grandpapa, you don't know any bank. My own papa said, you know, me, I don't know no bank, oh. As I said, they talk to you, so. We get our local way, we the fully organize our team, local banking. Me, I get seven million inside the account. Which account? Which bank? Local banking now, now they do our own. We, we are making a lot of money in this community. But our problem is we don't have bank close to us where we can keep it. Eh, look at that man there. He's a job man. He always come to us. He will come and collect money from different of us. He will take it to the bank and keep it for us. But we, if we say we want to go to the bank, this is our village. We travel to the town for 30 minutes. That is where we we'll travel. We will pay transport to town. And when we reach the town, we we'll get to bank. They will waste our time. For like one hour or sometimes two hours, they'll be walking around. They would just keep us there for too long. And you know, in this country now, time is money. So please, we are begging the bank. They say, come, to, come closer to us. In the area of finance in our business, bank doesn't help us. They can only allow us, they can only allow us to come and patronize them. But they don't help us all in our small business. Whenever we ask for loan, they will have access to open a current account, run it with some monies, withdraw and put and withdraw. When they want to give the loan, they will say they cannot be able to give loan to small business. Even though they want to give, the interest will be high, it's more than 30%. They know that we cannot be able to handle it. Please help us to tell government to let bank help us that are doing small business like this in the area of finance. When it comes to financial assets, um, I believe that uh, banks are the greatest enemies of small-scale businesses. As a small-scale entrepreneur, you get to a bank to acquire or require for a loan, acquire a loan, 
the procedures that is involved uh, in getting a loan are quite enormous. You would imagine a small scale business, someone who's selling um, a superstore, um, a provision store, you're expecting that person to have a property or a landed property, or sometimes they require for things that are so ridiculous. The interest rate that is involved in, 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 in the loan you require for, it's, it's, it's mind blowing. And it's, it does not encourage us to um, get to the bank in order to assess loans. Uh, again, the if you look if you are aware of these are job people these guys are hard working they are always they're always coming to your shop to to encourage you to to get finance um to save and then so that you can get finance whereas the banks they don't do that in view of this i would prefer to use these are job people to using the bank because these guys are hard working whereas they themselves they're in there in their ac lazy doing nothing and expecting you to bring your hard earned money to them and then punish you to get your money back. Another challenge which has been identified is the number of financial touch points. That is either bank branches or agent, lo agent locations where people can have access to financial services. Uh, because if you need to withdraw, let's say, 2,000 Naira and you need to spend, let's say, 1,000 to get to the bank, it, it, it will discourage you. Uh, in such instances, if one is even compelled to patronize a bank, it will be underserved. Because what it will do is that once it goes to the bank on a particular day, it will withdraw everything so that it will reduce uh, what it will spend on transportation. We need more points to serve people. And I'll throw this as a challenge as well to, to CB. I mean, we are talking to industry leaders here. When we sit down to talk about our strategies for the year and our, our plans to roll out financial services across the country, we need to think broader than the urban centers. We need to think to some of the rural areas. We need to think to areas that are not yet covered by financial services. It is no surprise that the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, yearns for every Nigerian to have access to financial service. We do. Today in the industry, if you check, Statistics also shows that there are about 17 million, uh, 17,000 ATMs to serve about 180 million Nigerians. That is not enough. The POS terminals that are out there, um, the ones that are active and are all connected to the central switch, about 140,000. How many can do serve? Financial inclusion is significant in Nigeria because of the large informal sector that includes millions of traders, farmers and residents in rural and suburban areas with little or no access to financial services. Basenshe gbogbo awati ape jambi ada egbesile fun ara wa a le je in a in a 15 group ti base da egbe yen sile a ma dawo bi a se nlo si odo ni a week I want me in that ni to two weeks. Like Egberti Mowa ni Ilaje Parapo. So Amanda Owo ni Osese. Amanda won one thousand ni Osese. So be Abani di Owo ni no Egberti on my beef on my loan. T on battery will pay Uncon or Peja la Pepila. So when I'm going to Kikaluna, Shana in a business in Nagadoni, Mamu Bama Gadara da the Banki, Bama Zoom, Kabakuria, Wurin Banki, so but I want a Nagado Nikama Iri now and a family ne, na family ne wana. So Mumu signed the Muka Samukudimu. So With the current macroeconomic challenges and uncertain outlook, the retail space in Nigeria has great potential for deposit mobilization engaging the underbanked, creating liquidity, driving cashless policy, and promoting economic growth. 
analysts say that to achieve financial inclusion in Nigeria, there is need to get past the debate about whether financial inclusion should be telecommunications or bank-led. Whether it is stock led or whether it is um, bank-led, the ultimate is for the consumers to benefit. And in the industry today, and particularly in CB, what we're emphasizing more than any other thing is collaboration. We are collaborating with telcos, we are collaborating with fintechs, we are collaborating with all stakeholders, the switches, we are collaborating with the, the card association, we are collaborating with the different vendors and stakeholders who are either manufacturers or providers of solutions and alternate means of uh, payment for their goods and services. Uh, we are collaborating with all of those um, entities to ensure that we expand that net. We expand the number of consumers who are onboarded into the into the sectors. We expand those who are driving the usage. We expand to the yellowjars on the street, the meat sellers, the, the pepper sellers, the, the all of everyone is is who we are working with to ensure that we're able to extend that that net to them and hopefully bring them on board. Uh, it is said in Africa that for a bed to fly and soar, it needs both wings. A bird does not fly with only one wing. So instead of sharing blame, I think what we should do is that all of us should collaborate. The regulator, the operators, uh, the, even the banking public, all of us should collaborate to ensure that we take financial inclusion to the next level. Mobile network operators have massive footprints, distribution retail networks, and huge customer leverage at the base of the pyramid. They can provide the best opportunity to offer more financial services to enhance and expand financial inclusion. You just have to look at what Kenya has done. The government allowed Safaricom, yes, though it be owned by the Kenyan government, to be the driving force for the penetration of financial banking services to mobile subscribers, which are many. So having a bank-led financial inclusion drive is not the right way to go about this. It's almost like putting the cart before the horse. It should really be a telecom, telco-driven, led mobile banking initiative. Because most of the subscribers that we have nowadays have a mobile phone. Most of them that are on the 145 million or 139 million active subscriber base, depending on the statistics you refer to, have a mobile phone. And a, a great percentage of those have smartphones. So there is really a demonstration that banking and the way the banks are structured are actually having a non-interest income that is greater than what they expected just because of the ubiquitousness of a mobile device. I think the primary opportunity that digital financial services brings into the conversation is the fact that digital transcends the barrier of um, the fiscal channel. A fiscal channel in the traditional sense, you're talking maybe a bank branch or a microfinance bank or any other you know, fiscal points, a building like this. But in terms of digital, you can have a service on say a mobile phone and that is really not as limited as the fiscal channel that you have to travel to. So for this to actually develop properly, you can't just have a service on a mobile phone. You need a strong agency network as well to support that service. So that when people do their transactions on the phone, they have a physical point of presence, which could be a supermarket, a petrol station, a pharmacy, you know, correspondent point they can actually go to, to to terminate their transaction. They can cash in, they can cash out, and they can also do end-to-end -end transactions really. Banks, on the other hand, are in pole position to expand financial services for the base of the economic pyramid, particularly with new technologies that allow banks to reach customers efficiently across the country. And I will say a big, big plus to, to all of those initiatives that are out there digitizing and expanding that net. So we are not just restricted to uh, the confine of the four walls of what, what we call banks of branches today, we are demystifying that and we are asking our consumers to use all of their devices, 
mobile, in, uh, desktop, laptop, uh, palm tops, all devices that are available to them, being able to use it to do their, to do their transactions. So it's, re it's really helping and I'm sure we have not even scratched um, the surface. So supposing you have somebody working for you and at the end of the month, even if it is 20,000 that you are paying him as a salary and you hand it over to him in cash, you are not encouraging financial inclusion. But if you encourage him to probably open a mobile wallet and you transfer the money to him, the good thing is that he's not likely to withdraw everything at a time. And so by withdrawing some and leaving some, such people are also creating what is known as savings. Although the Central Bank of Nigeria in her regulatory capacity has introduced several measures through policy guidelines, licensing, researches and support towards bringing the underbanked into the mainstream which has opened up opportunities for all the financial institutions to replicate the same success stories across the world such as Bangladesh and Kenya industry experts say that to move forward regulation and policies should also allow space for non-bank players to have a role in the financial space that do not stifle innovations Regulation in terms of knowing your, knowing your customer is important. Regulation in terms of having correct data on the customers is important. And I'm very encouraged by what is happening in Ghana in terms of the digital addressing system, where we are now able to locate individuals by the physical addresses, which we don't have in Nigeria. Digital transcends the barrier of um, the fiscal channel. The fiscal channel in the traditional sense, you're talking maybe a bank branch, or a microfinance bank or any other you know, fiscal points, a building like this. But in terms of digital, you can have a service on, say, a mobile phone. And that is really not as limited as a fiscal channel that you have to travel to. So for this to actually develop properly, you can't just have a service on a mobile phone. You need a strong agency network as well to support that service. So that when people do their transactions on the phone, they have a physical point of presence which could be a supermarket, a petrol station, a pharmacy, you know, correspondent point they can actually go to, to to terminate their transaction. They can cash in, they can cash out, and they can also do end-to-end -end transactions, really. Mobile money and agency banking is a good solution to solving problems of SMEs, of small and medium, in fact, petty traders, you know. And I believe, for instance, in Kenya, mobile money, there is a, a facility under the mobile money scheme where you give out credits, micro credits, and you pay via your mobile money, you know, wallet. So in fact, the the your 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 the way you use your mobile wallet would determine how much credits you'll be exposed to. So I believe that if we can get it right in Nigeria, mobile money and agency banking has a whole lot to play in helping drive, you know, these guys at the bottom of the pyramid. and financial institution should walk the talk by providing an appropriate enabling environment in keeping pace with new technologies, new players, and collaborations that support interoperable mobile payments infrastructure, promote mobile money, and bank agents that will ultimately bridge the digital divide in financial inclusion. In a lot of circle, you know, we hear that cash is king. But I'm here to tell you that that is changing. As people embrace you know, financial services and digital channels particularly, they form part of a larger ecosystem where they can do you know, other financial services beyond just, you know, beyond just cash. Yeah? So my message to CB, you are the committee of e-banking industry heads, you are the leaders in the space, you are really the one to make this happen. So we are counting on you.